Doctors Bill and Veronica Winston are dedicated to seeing lives changed through the power of prayer. Our loving and highly trained prayer ministers are ready to pray and agree with you. We know that prayer can turn around any situation in your life. Contact us by phone at 1-877-543-9443 or submit your prayer request online at billwinston.org forward slash prayer. We want to thank our partners who have made this prayer call center possible. Together, we are transforming lives throughout the world. If you are not a partner, we encourage you to pray about joining us in partnership and be a part of the wonderful work that God is doing through this ministry. We love you and look forward to praying and partnering with you. The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. You got to be free of fear, fear of everything. Get rid of all fear. You should have no fear. You are connected to a God who has the unlimited power that if you could ever get rid of fear, then you have just connected with unlimited power. No fear. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. And basically you either in fear or faith, but if you won't fear, you won't fail. Say, I have no fear. I have great faith. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. Contaminated faith doesn't have this kind of power. Well, I wonder why that didn't work. Because your faith is contaminated. Say fearless. fearless. Let's take Daniel chapter six. What is happening? Daniel goes against the law of this Persian kingdom in this sector. And what did he do? They said, don't pray. I'm talking about the church now because they told you to take them Bibles out of the schools and you said, yes, sir, boss, and took them out and took them out. Now I'm telling you what we're going to have to come back with. We're going to have to get the fear out. But here's Daniel and Daniel instead of bowing to the law that they'd made that nobody can pray to any other God except the God of heaven and earth. I mean, except their false God. Daniel went up in his room. Now he didn't need to do this, but he opened the window and began to pray to his God. Now, it seemed to me, in my day, we'll call that picking a fight. Because, you know, let me tell you this. I just wrote it up in my partner letter. So, when I was a kid in high school, we would go to the university campus sometimes. We'd play uh, basketball. And that would be on Saturday. Sometimes they have an open gym. And they had some, a lot of goal posts, and, I mean, uh, basketball courts and so is, is much bigger and so forth and very nice. And so we'd meet, but guys would meet from both sides of town. See? And usually some side didn't like the other side too much and so forth. And there was this guy named Herman. And Herman was a bully. Now, if your name is Herman, I'm not talking about you. This is not, this is not your moment. I'm telling you what happened uh, this, on this deal here. So here, and so you try to check or guard Herman, Herman will elbow you. And, and then go in for the shot, see? Now you elbow, you, you grab yourself and he's going and made the shot. And Herman would do that when we come up. And pretty soon, 
I didn't like it. <laughs> now you, you got to understand, I wasn't the biggest ball player on the team, but I thought I was. <laughs> Am I right? And lion is not the biggest animal in that jungle, but he thinks he is, and you can't talk him out of it. And they respect him for what he thinks. So I told him, I said, let me check him, man. Let me check him. And I, I you know, started checking Herman. And boom, shot me an elbow. I said, okay. I said, okay, let's go outside. <laughs> now, on my way out, you know I used to think I was Superman anyway. You, you know that. But on my way out, now I am not advocating violence. Say this, he is not advocating violence in the name of Jesus. He's just telling a story when he was unsaved. Okay, so what happened? Was he elbow me? I say, let's come outside. Because I was fed up. I was fed up and nobody would face him. And I don't know what happened to me. I, I just, it just came over me. And I said, let's go outside. And on the way out, the boys said, ooh, man. Hey, how about Winston, man? Well, he can hit pretty hard, man. I, you know, I'm hearing all these, you know, just like, just like it's Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier, you know. And on the way out, this is what I said. I'm going to hit him once. I'm not going to hit him twice. I said, I'm going to hit him once. Now, I'm working a principle. David hit him once. And I knew that story. I said, I'm going to hit him once. And that's going to be the end of it. Now, I was infuriated because nobody would stand up to him. See, the devil is a bully. Really, that's why they, they, he tries to show you all the things on TV and try to it's in a suggestion that you got that too. Can't you feel it in your side or so forth and so on? And, and I mean, it's one thing after another. So I said, y'all want to hear the rest of this? And so what happened? <laughs> so what did I do? <clears throat> I said, okay. <clears throat> I got out there and the guys were all around, you know? And I said, okay, I'm going to hit him once. I don't know where that power came from. I, listen, I, it, I wrote it up in my partner letter for this month. I don't know where that power came from, but it came. It hit him so hard. <laughs> blood out over his nose and so forth. Oh, hey, that's all right. That's all right, man. That's all right. You know, faith and confession. <laughs> David said, okay, this day, the Lord is going to deliver you into my hands. The church has to rise up. You have got a bully making laws for your little children with books that are so filthy as porno and, 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 and saying nothing about it, no outrage, just being elbowed. Man, let me tell you. Yeah. Whole church. Well, they're glad to come up in here. But God is training you up in here to face that bully. 
enough is enough. Lord, have mercy. Don't you know I was the talk of the town? Now, that's not what I was looking for. I was just outraged that nobody would say a thing because they didn't want to face Herman. I don't know where he is. Now he may be saved and maybe a pope somewhere. But my point to you is, is that during that time, these people made up in their mind that fear was not going to be a part of their program. And I believe that enemy is using fear today all over the place. You name it. And they said, even over in uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15, through fear of death, they were all their lifetime enslaved. Scared to die. Scared they're going to die. You're not going to die. We've canceled all premature death in the ministry. How about one man? Now this, this is, this is one woman changed all the laws. I'm talking about without fear now. Somebody that didn't have fear. Somebody who was fearless. Fearless. Because you'd be surprised all the little areas Satan tried to make fear come in your life because he needs to get fear there so he can get a grip. But if you won't fear, you won't fail. You won't fail. I mean, I've gone places, I'm being transparent. I've gone places and preached for a big thing. And, and that night I'm studying and in one half hour, my throat closed up. I called my wife, said, baby, I don't know what, I can't hardly even talk. I said, it's hurting, it's closed. And it wasn't until sometime later, I said, God, what was that? He said, that was fear. Amen. See how the enemy can do something with your body if you fear. No, down at Lake and Pulaski, I remember I was teaching them all how to teach Sunday school and so forth. We had a main service, but we had a kind of a Sunday school because, you know, they had come from that and we had some. And I had different people because we had taught them and different people would take a Sunday school lesson lead. And I told somebody, I said, hey, uh, you, you got it next Sunday. No, I can't take that. I said, no, no, it'd be all right. I said, I'll help you work it out. And it's just a little lesson and you just teach it. I can't do it. Pastor, I can't do it. I said, how do you know you can't do it? I just know I, I can't do it. And I'm telling you, I said, no, you're going to do this because we need to get you and get you in a place where you, you know, you can teach the word of God. So for the middle of the week, went into the hospital with heart palpitations. Men's hearts will fail them because of fright with fear. Why? Because what's happening to the earth. They're going to feel it. I'm just saying no fear. Amen. Say no fear. No fear. 1 Kings chapter 6. Okay. And uh, verse, uh, I think 16 through 18 or something. Okay. And this is one man. Now just listen to me. Now one man. He got surrounded by a Syrian army. Am I right about that? Yes. And the servant came out and the servant said, Master, what are we going to do? Panic. Yes. That's, that's fear. Yes. You got to watch that one. Yes. Amen. Amen. He, he, did you hear that noise in the kitchen? <laughs> now, now see, you, you follow what I'm saying? <laughs> what, whatever it is, yes. rebuke it yes. in yes. Jesus' name. Rebuke it. And so what happened next is the servant came out and saw him and panicked said, Master, alas, but what are we going to do now? He said, cool it, man. I'm going to use my word. Just cool up. He said, fear 
not. There be more with us than be with them. Now see what fear could do? It cut off your spiritual sight. You can't see your help. I got to stay out of fear. I said, I got to stay out of fear. Now, uh, there are some more in Mary. How about Mary? Mary had to not only carry that baby, but she, she received this thing and uh, when the angel came to her and told her she was going to have a child and so forth, she said, he said, and, and the child shall be the son of God. Mary said, well, go be it unto me. Praise God. Amen. And watch this, was expecting, you know, and people knew she wasn't married yet. Now, I'm not saying do that. I'm just saying that's what happened to Mary. All right. My point to you, she had no fear of receiving because he said it's going to be the son of God. Mary didn't know what she was receiving, what she had received was going to save her life. Yes. So uh, I think you got it, don't you? Yes. Now, now, now notice whether it's a woman or whether it's a man, the same power can flow through. But fear is there to block that power. He says over in Matthew 24 and verse seven, come on, read that with me. Let's start. For nation shall rise up against nation. Come on. Kingdom against kingdom. And what else? Oh, hold on. There shall be what? Famines. Come on here. What else? Earthquake. Come on. What else? See, because... There is no rain has nothing to do with a green deal. It has something to do with the curse that is on this earth that a windmill can't do nothing about. Well, fossil fuel, it can't do nothing about it. It can't do anything about it. You, you, you trying to cut back on this and so forth and so on. Oh, no, 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 no. This is much bigger than that. This is the kind of thing that only the church can do something about. Because they got something called a blessing that can make any place on earth like the Garden of Eden. In the last days, there are going to be famine. There's going to be no rain. There's going to, but the church can be like Elijah. He said, it stops when I tell it to stop, and it'll start when I tell it to start, man. Boy, that's powerful stuff. One man can make it rain whenever he wants it to. Isn't that what the song said? I can make it rain whenever I want it to. All right, don't, don't be saying it. Y'all stay saved. <laughs> so here's what he says. Mark chapter 11 and verse 23. Read it with me. But shall believe the whole thing that he said shall come to pass. He Faith is Satan's greatest nightmare. Don't ever forget that. He will do all kinds of things to keep you from developing your faith. He'll even give you stuff to keep you from developing your faith. He knows if you don't develop your faith, he can take it back. I told him Sunday and I'll say it again because it was told to me. One of the worst places you can be in life as a believer is in a place where you don't have to use any faith. Keep faith working on something all the time. So here, the enemy, worst place, 
you can be as a place. He said, you got, he can't let you develop your faith. He's got to keep you from developing it. Stop reading the word of God. Stop confessing the word of God, so forth and so on. Now, in that, hold on. I got a couple of things here I just had on this sheet. Praise God. Are you getting something out of this here? Yeah. So I just want to make sure that I'm giving you what you need to fight with. Yeah. And the biggest thing you need to fight with is knowledge. Yeah. He said, my people are what? Destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Faith is a servant. Is a servant. Faith is a servant. Now, how do I know that? Over in Luke chapter 17 and verse five, he said, Lord, increase our faith. And then as I look at the next one, he said, well, if you had faith as a grain of you say to the sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the river, so forth and so on. And then he says, uh, which, which of you having a servant plowing? And he goes on, talks about the servant, not only serving you, but he comes in and he finishes something. And he said, don't let him sit down. Let him serve you until you have finished all you're supposed to do. Yes. Then let him take a rest. See, don't let your faith stop. Thank you, Once you get one thing come in, put it on another. Yes. Isn't that powerful? Yes. Faith will always do the job. Amen. I said faith will always yes. do the job. Say amen to that. Amen. And also have faith in your faith. Yes. Have faith in your faith. And the last thing I have down here, we're coming into a time where faith is no longer going to be an option. It's going to be a requirement. Amen. He said over in Luke chapter 18, I think it's verse eight. When he comes back, will he find faith on the earth? God said, I want you to teach faith all over the world. Man, he knew what was coming. And I'm telling you, if you have faith, whatever the world is subject to will just go right past you. If you got the right faith, I believe you can transfer funds. Do you hear what I'm telling you? You can make it so that they put your name on the grant. Watch this. They have a dream about you that night and wake up. You, you follow what I'm saying? Yes. But this is what faith can do. Amen. So I'll start where I, I'll come back to where I started. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. Now, as we have finished this lesson tonight, God's going to be showing you little places where fear has been in your life. I sought the Lord, he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that every place that Satan has come into our lives and planted unbelief, doubt, and fear, we pray that it be ridded out. Lord, just like you rooted out that tree, root that tree out of us that's carrying that fear and doubt and unbelief. Let us walk strong in faith, giving glory to God and fully persuaded that what you have promised, you're able to perform. Well, I trust that you enjoyed that teaching. Now that's called no fear. 
It means just that. No fear. Fear should be off limits for a believer. I'm talking about you. Fear. Things come on television, whatever have you, is trying to get you in fear. And because when fear is present, faith doesn't work. You got to get fear out. No fear, not a little bit of fear. No fear. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. You don't want that. He <laughs> said, just shall live by faith. God has made it so you can't, you don't need to fear death, just sickness, going broke, anything. Just make up your mind right now. Repeat after me. No fear in Jesus' name. Praise God. It is a powerful teaching. Order it today. You will not be disappointed. Bill Winston saying, we love you and keep walking by faith. You got to be free of fear, fear of everything. Get rid of all fear. You should have no fear. You are connected to a God who has the unlimited power that if you could ever get rid of fear, then you have just connected with unlimited power. No fear. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. And basically you either in fear or faith, but if you won't fear, you won't fail. Say, I have no fear. I have great faith. Blessed by today's message, order No Fear in its entirety to receive the full teaching. This two-part series is available on CD or MP3, on DVD or MP4. To order, contact us at 1-800-711-9327 or online at BillWinston.org. Doctors Bill and Veronica Winston are dedicated to seeing lives changed through the power of prayer. Our loving and highly trained prayer ministers are ready to pray and agree with you. We know that prayer can turn around any situation in your life. Contact us by phone at 1-877-543-9443 or submit your prayer request online at billwinston.org forward slash prayer. We want to thank our partners who have made this prayer call center possible. Together, we are transforming lives throughout the world. If you are not a partner, we encourage you to pray about joining us in partnership and be a part of the wonderful work that God is doing through this ministry. We love you and look forward to praying and partnering with you. The mission of Bill Winston Ministries is to preach the gospel of the kingdom throughout the world. This broadcast has been made available to you through the faithful support of Bill Winston Ministry partners and friends. Thank you, Bill Winston Ministry partners and viewers for your continuous support of the Believer's Walk of Faith broadcast. The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. Now remember, you need faith to get to your destiny. So don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our videos. This is Bill Winston. I love you and keep walking by faith.